let's, okay, so let's go back to how you got to Africa. Okay. Uh, on my mother's side, um, my great-grandfather, our great-grandfather, he owned two blacksmith shops in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the owners of the mill had heard how good he was with mechanical devices. And so they took a trip to Knoxville and offered him a job here at the cotton mill. And he sold both of them and moved his family here to Ackworth. And this must have been, I don't know, somewhere around the turn of the century. I'm not sure what year. Probably 1920s, early 20s. And he bought the, the white two-story house on the corner of Main Street and Park, Park Street. So when the crash came in 1929, his son, Ross Pope, who lived in Chattanooga and worked for the railroad, lost his job, lost everything he had. And of course, his dad offered him a job at the mill and insisted he start at the bottom, which he did. He finally worked his way up to foreman, but anyway, uh, uh, my mother was really young, and she had um, two brothers and one sister at that time. And then, of course, she met my dad here. And then on the other side of the family, which is our dad's side, Casey's. Papa Fowler uh, owned a uh, farm out in Cherokee County. So he decided he wanted to move to town. And when he did, he had five girls and... I think maybe four boys at that time. And he bought the house right next door to the Christian church on Northside Drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was somewhere, I don't know, that was around the turn of the century too. But my grandmother and her four sisters were all young. And um, being that it was right in front of the railroad, they would be out in the front yard. At that time, the paper would be thrown in the front yards. And our, of, the train. of the train. And our granddaddy, Clifford Casey, was the engineer on the train, and he was young. He was only like 20, 21. So out of all five of the girls, he noticed our grandmother, Grace. And they started waving, and she just happened to be out there every day when he came through in his route, and they started waving, this and this, <laughs> this went on for a while. Mm -hmm. Then one day, um, he decided to throw her a box of candy. And he threw her a big box of candy out on the front yard. And then this went on for a while, more waving. And then one day he threw her a note. And he said, will you meet me at the Ackworth Depot? So she asked Papa Fowler, and he said, well, I guess you can, but you have to take one of your sisters with you. So she took one of her sisters, and then, then they courted and married and then stayed here. Um, and then, of course, our daddy, Bill, was one of their children, five children. Mm -hmm. So, but they moved to Atlanta for a while because uh, his main station was Atlanta. And then, Pullman. Then, yeah, Pullman. And then they moved back here when daddy was, I think he was 14 or 15. Okay. And then my mother and dad actually met um, in Atlanta at our daddy's younger brother's funeral. My mother uh, had a friend who was a cousin to my daddy, and, and she invited her to go, and that's where they met. And so that was pretty much it. But um, we, um, we had a great childhood here growing up. My first memories is I was about three, and we lived on Cherokee Street. We lived all over town until our parents built a house in 1957, which our mother still resides there with our stepfather. But my first memory, I was three, and I was hiding in the, the clothes hamper, and they were all looking for me. And the reason I was hiding is because then Dr. Cobble, he would go out to the homes to give shots. So he was on his way to give us all our, I don't know if it was whooping cough or what, but they finally found me and drug me out of the clothes hamper, and Dr. Cobble gave us our shots. But we had so many kids in that neighborhood. We had the Blassing Games, the Chandlers, the Smiths, the Beardens. The Barons, the Corbins. The, the Barons, the Corbins. The Jacobs. Jacobs, yeah. who else? That's about it. We were outside all day. We would have what you call tacky parties. And we would dress up as tacky as we could, and we would march in a line <laughs> all, all over the neighborhood. 
But we um, we played ball, and do you have anything to add to that neighborhood? We had a good time. Do you think of anything specific in that neighborhood? Yeah, you? I can think of a lot. But. <laughs> Go ahead and throw one out there. <laughs> I remember when uh, Mr. Bearden's dog bit our cousin George Pope, and <laughs> and they were going to kill the dog, and we were all freaking out, and we were hiding in the Bearden's house with our head down, and of course he killed the dog, and that like killed us, and because George was probably aggravating the dog. And I remember we put the dog in a wagon and we had a funeral procession, a, a, a fourth of a mile long, all of us going to the woods to bury the dog. Mm -hmm. And we climbed everybody's pear trees and apple trees and ate all their fruit and got watermelons out of people's gardens and <laughs> played all kinds of games. And there was must have been about 50 of us all total. Yeah, there was. Yeah. But we, we never lacked for anything to do. Never. We didn't have videos. We didn't have anything. We didn't even have a TV. We, well, we got a TV when we lived there. Did we get one when we, we lived there? We were the only there? one in the neighborhood with a TV. Wow. I didn't but all we did that. was watch Woody Willow, and I think Howdy Doody came on later, but that was it, and we were out back outside. Yeah, outside. You know? <laughs> Two programs. So, but then the, ne then the next... Um, that's when we got the grocery store when we lived there. That's right. I'm glad you brought that up. We, Daddy owned, it's called WT Grocery, and we have a picture of it. Um, it was right on Main Street where Daddy's Country Kitchen used to be, but it was up on the street. And I remember I wanted to stay at the store because I liked to, uh, the boy, our grocery boy that delivered groceries, who was he? He's the one that died young. That's the one I was in love with. What was his name? I was four years old. Uh, they named the field Newberry, after Bobby Newberry. Bobby Newberry. I wanted to ride with Bobby <laughs> to deliver groceries. And I can remember he'd have a little keen hickory. And when I wouldn't mind, he would switch me on my legs. <laughs> it was time to take me home. I would be screaming and crying. And he'd say, you know, he'd switch me on the legs. He wouldn't hurt me. But um, our father was a practical joker. He lived, he would rather play a joke on somebody than eat dinner. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was just something constant all the time. Mm -hmm. He'd put the uh, uh, electric think on the drink box. Uh, Bobby Newberry said that he would go in to get him a drink, and Daddy had rigged up the box to shock him, and um, just putting dead rats in my granddaddy's delivery truck and to scare him to death, because my grandfather would get off the railroad and come deliver all the groceries. We had an old panel truck and uh, they'd be there waiting on him, and he would go deliver. And they put a big dead rodent in his seat one day, and he couldn't get the door open because <laughs> the inside handle was broken, and he just knocked the door off and got out. <laughs> you know, just something like that all the time. I can remember sitting all up the on a high stool in that grocery store and watching my granddaddy with those old meat grinders. Mm -hmm. He would get the meat, and it was freshly ground and grind it right there in the store. And I can still see that meat mm -hmm. coming out of that. Then after we sold the store, we went to Stuckey's. In we went to Stuckey's for a year so Daddy could get his training. We came back, and Daddy ran the Stuckey store out on 41. Uh, the building's still there. and uh, It was complete torture for whoever worked for him. Yeah. I mean, it was just something he pulled all the time on them. Tricks. He'd hide in the back seat of their car with a stocking on his head. Yeah. He would rig a bucket of water over the door. Uh, he'd put something slimy in the floor, just anything to get a, joke, a laugh. We thought growing up like that was normal. We thought all families <laughs> were that way. But we found out when we grew up, that's not really normal. But I can remember uh, at that store, even at my age of six, seven maybe eight years old, I had a job. We had to pick up paper out in clean the front. Clean the bathrooms. And clean the bathrooms. Lay pecans and bag them up. Yes, we had to make uh, sandwiches. We had fresh uh, homemade pimento cheese. Egg salad, ham, ham salad. Egg salad, and in the, in the kitchen, yeah. we had our apartment. Tuna salad. We lived in the apartment in the back of the store. Mm. And I can remember sitting at that kitchen table and we'd... Grinding eggs all day, yes. grating those eggs. And we were little. <laughs> we were just kids. And we'd have to, we'd put them in a... You slice them up and you wrap them in and you staple them and put yeah. the label on them, whatever sandwich kind it was. Wax paper. And we'd sell five and six hundred a day mm -hmm. on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. What the tourists would have thought if they'd known... 
children were in the back making the I don't know. <laughs> they probably wouldn't have eaten them. <coughs> My was, mother was there with us, supervising us. But there I was could, five of us in the two-bedroom apartment. Yeah. But we didn't think. And then it, six when Bill was born. Yeah, we thought that was normal too. We yeah. we just we just had fun. But I can remember mother saying that, you know, a lot of well Yankees. Okay, I say that respectfully. Uh, people from up north. Everybody who went to Florida came by, Stop and they called it Stookies, and that was a real. <laughs> yeah, they would they wouldn't say Stuckies. They were probably pronouncing it like it was supposed to be. But we said we would. It was always kind of a joke to us. Here comes the Yankees. They're coming to Stookies. So, <laughs> but they just dropped the C. Yeah. Yeah, they just yeah. dropped the C. And you think that's the way it was supposed to be? Yeah, yeah, maybe but it, so. At night, when my friends would come over to spend the night, we'd go out in the store and play and run and have the best time, eat pecans and drink coconut milk and milkshakes and eat candy. And well, I can remember, too, we'd go out there at night when Mother and Daddy would be in the bed, and we'd get candy, you know, those good coconut bars with the chocolate and uh, pecan log rolls. And we, we uh, there was three of us in the same bedroom. We had bunk beds, and we'd hide it up under our pillow. One night, Mother came in there, and she said, have y'all got candy under those pillows? I said, no, we don't have any candy. I know you have candy. Open those pillows. <laughs> so we had to show her. So that was the end of our sneaking in the store. Mm, well, yeah. We thought, well, it was our store. We were yeah. supposed to have it. I, they never got on to me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she, she, I remember getting caught with the candy. But then, um, okay, when Daddy, when he got tired of the Stucky store, it came up. At the Ackworth Beach at that time, in the early 50s, mm -hmm. the city would put bids out to anyone to bid on it. Yeah, we bid it. To yeah. run it for the summer. Oh, yeah. So Daddy, he won the bid two summers in a row. Well, there we were, two summers in a row. We had jobs there as well. Mm -hmm. What was your job? What wasn't my job? <laughs> Selling uh, cotton candy. Stuck me in a... Shed thing down on the beach selling snow cones. Snow cones. Out on the porch, the screened in porch selling ice cream cones. Uh, Gwen, my older sister, she got the cushy job. She got to run the basket room. And we were always in the concession stand frying up hamburgers or doing drinks. And sometimes Gwen had to work in there too. Yeah, she did. The but it's where you buy, you paid a quarter to change clothes oh, okay. and it, you could take a shower and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we, we would keep your clothes and you'd get a little number. A little tag. The same little tag, that, yeah. the same number that was on the basket. But I was too young to do any of that. Yeah. But I did have to have a job. Mm -hmm. my, this is my two jobs. I had to sit outside the ladies' restroom and make sure nobody snuck in there and changed because you're supposed to pay a quarter. <laughs> and I can remember one, one time this girl went there, I said, she changed. She came back out with her bathing suit. I said, you have to pay me a quarter. Now I was only eight, nine years old. And she just looked at me like, yeah, right. She takes off running down on the beach and I run after her. And she never did give me that quarter. <laughs> and then I also had to watch. Now back then, we were open on Sundays, but you could not dance in the well, dance hall. We could hall. at first, and then they made us stop. Well, so we Sunday. had to go in there and make sure nobody was dancing in the dance hall on Sunday. Well, I, that was and my job. And then you had but Beth and I both on the weekends. Uh, they started getting on to people say they were not dancing right, which really it was just rock and roll then. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were supposed to report to Daddy if anybody was acting up and dancing too fast. So uh, we couldn't see over the crowd, so we, there was a bench around the whole dance hall. So we'd get up on that bench, it was made to the wall, so we could see everybody. And then we'd report, you know, and this one girl, Daddy kept trying to ask her and ask her to quit, to quit. Yeah. And she wouldn't do it, so he got this guy, take some itching powder and put down her back. <laughs> and she quit after that. Well, when, I know one Sunday when I was having to watch, they were not supposed to dance at all. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting yeah, there, and then they, they came in, and they started dancing. So I sat there for a few minutes, and here I was, timid, eight, nine years yeah. old. And I said, you're not supposed to dance on Sunday. And they said, shh, don't you go tell them. <laughs> and I just sat there. I didn't do anything. <laughs> so I didn't tell them. Teenagers that are dancing. No, 
Yeah, yeah. it was teenagers yeah. that were dancing. It looks like they'd be worried if they were dancing too slow instead of too fast. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. But yeah. these, they, on those Sundays, they weren't supposed to dance at when, all. When, like during the week in the summer when the sun wasn't out, we still had to have a lifeguard on duty. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but everybody, all the locals, would come down to the beach anyway. Yeah. Well, they they weren't down there for the beach, for the sand. Mm -hmm. Well, Daddy would have uh, people uh, eating 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 contest. Okay. I remember Pete Brown. Daddy gave him a zero a box of zero candy bars, and one drink, and told him if he could eat all of that in so many minutes, he'd give him five dollars. <laughs> well, Daddy'd rather see him get sick than do it. He didn't care about the five dollars. He didn't care about how long it took Pete. He just wanted to see that he, Nut would eat a whole box of zeros. Of course, we started calling him Zero after that. And just like uh, a box of soda crackers, he, he, that really choke him up, you know. You eat this box of soda crackers and you get one RC. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when Daddy, he would help everybody. If he mm -hmm. saw somebody that needed something, either my mother or my dad. Yeah, both of them. Well, like when we had the grocery store, my dad would never done anybody because mm -mm. we had charge counts. And mother would get on to him. Well, I'm not going to go and ask those people for money. Mm -hmm. And my mother would get a box of canned goods. She was always going to somebody in town that she found out needed food, and they had food. If they were, mm -hmm. Then when we left the beach, uh, we had the cafe in town, and we fed two or three families free mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Yeah. But... Uh, my dad would go out on Halloween and have his fun, and me and my older sister would have to run the cafe all night. We'd stay up all night on the weekends. What was your father doing on Halloween? Uh, shooting firecrackers off the hotel. I had a dummy in the trunk with a hand hanging out with ketchup on it. Uh, just anything to have fun with, anything. And then one, one time on the top of the hotel, remember... Uh, Douglas G. was up there throwing firecrackers off, and some <coughs> other boy, y'all part. Doug's been. He's a, he's, he's a he's long been time gone a resident. Years, he's a, but I he. Can't uh, imagine him throwing fireworks off. They <laughs> did, but they had a ladder. Well, the local police, which happened to be two or three of our uncles, they saw what was going on, and they snuck over there and took the ladder down. And those boys were stuck up there for hours. They were panicking. But talking, going back to the cafe, I can remember. Of course, we were at Ackworth Elementary, and at lunch... Well, you forgot about the silver trolley. Yeah, we'll go back to that in a minute. But at lunch, I would walk from school to downtown Ackworth to the cafe, which is where the Ivy Florist is. No, that's, it's on up. Okay. Two doors up from there. Two doors. Anyway, that's where the cafe was, and I would walk up there every day. Now, my job in the cafe <laughs> was we didn't have those big <coughs> dishwashers like they have now. We had those big, huge sinks. I would have to wash dishes, and I can remember. Not all the time. Well, some of the time. <laughs> we all did. I had to put, uh, we had to put Clorox in there, and I can oh. still smell that Clorox because yeah. we had to sanitize. Your hands. Well, no, we didn't have we gloves didn't on or anything, mm -hmm. but that was. Just dipped it in there. Just that was. Rinse water. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was pretty much my job at the cafe. Yeah. And let's, yeah, let's go all the way back to the Silver Trial. Well, well, let me tell you something about the cafe again. Uh, Daddy was uh, pulling a joke on somebody else, and they were wrestling around, and they went through the the wall. <laughs> and, of course, Hubert Allen on the building. And Daddy just moved the jukebox over where that big hole was. <laughs> and then one time, uh, Lowell Turner, we called him Goggs because he wore thick glasses. <laughs> and Daddy got a shocking machine, and it was on the wall. And Daddy tricked him and told him, he said, Goggs, have you seen my new shock, uh, shocking machine? And No. He said, well, what you do is you take the handles and you turn it all the way, and that was all the electricity you could get, see. And Daddy said, now I'll put the dime in for you, penny. I'll put the penny in for you. <laughs> and he got there and turned those handles all the way up, and Daddy stuck that penny in there, and there was a greasy spot on the wall where he hit his head. <laughs> <laughs> he never really hurt anybody but... I, it was fine. He didn't. If he did, he didn't mean to, right. you know. But uh, he would use that mustard oil and drop it on your blue jeans or something. And, but then he he um, got worried about using that. He's afraid he'd burn somebody, so he quit using that. 
to. <laughs> well, not only out there where they always playing jokes, but at my grandmother's house where we lived when I was two and three years old for a few years on Northside Drive right next to the Christian. They were, they were always playing jokes on each other then. But let's jump way back to the silver trolley. Okay. I don't have a lot of memories of the silver trolley. I was yeah. real young, well, but I have some. Well, I, we were told, and I don't know if this is for real, that my grandfather, when they took the trolleys out of downtown Atlanta, Casey. Mm-hmm. my grandfather Casey, mm-hmm. brought one of the trolleys to Ackworth on the train. And they set it up, painted it silver, and opened up a jute joint. Tell them where it was now. It's, it's right where? Allen's, I don't know. It's up from the old drugstore. You know where the bookstore is in town on Main Street? It was right in that area. It was a, really a silver yeah. trolley. We had the best chili dogs in town, and I mean, that place restaurant. stayed full. We had breakfast and lunch, and we weren't open for dinner. And my grandmother and granddaddy worked there, and uh, my dad and mom, and we go up there at, at lunch for school, and um, but I was going to go back and tell you something about at the beach. There was this little boy in town in Ackworth that was in real in an unfortunate position, mm-hmm. and so my dad felt sorry for him, and so he was real dirty, didn't have anything, didn't do anything, just idle all the time, mm-hmm. and my dad taught him how to run the grit paper route, and he went up to Boone Service Station, and went on a note with this boy to help him get his life together. Mm-hmm. And and so he got him a bicycle. But he told this boy that you've got to pay to make the payments. <laughs> you know, and he taught him the grit paper route. Well he did real good for a while and Daddy gave him odd jobs at the beach and sweeping and cleaning up and stuff and mm-hmm. uh so one day he was late on his bicycle payment and Daddy took the bicycle and hit it in the bread truck at the beach. <laughs> you could have heard him screaming all the way to town on his bicycle, you know. Mm-hmm. So that he was never late on that payment again. Okay. And uh, so, and then I got complaining about he stunk. I said, now, Daddy, he stinks now. And he comes up and puts his filthy hands on the counter at the beach. And so Daddy and, and a couple other guys went up town, bought overalls, boots, underwear, socks, everything and took him in the shower room. And you could hear him cussing all the way to town then. I remember. And cleaned mm-hmm. him up. Mm-hmm. But when my dad got killed, we were at the funeral. And I didn't, when we got up to leave after the funeral, I didn't look too many people in the face. But there he was, standing in the back of that mm-hmm. church. Crying. And he was dirty again. But yeah. he had two big old white streaks running yeah. down his face where he'd been crying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that um, Marietta had a trolley into Atlanta <coughs> into 1947, and then Mayor Hartsfield wanted all those lanes for cars and yeah. silver trolleys. So mm-hmm. it must have been like uh, late 40s that the silver trolley. Yeah, because I remember. Yeah, very late. I remember going on the train to downtown Atlanta and getting on the trolley uh-huh. to go to the shoe, Thompson Bowl and Lee Shoe store. And I do remember riding the trolleys. Mm-hmm. And I was about, well, it, I had to be three or four and five, mm-hmm. four and five, I think. Mm-hmm. And I was born in 45. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so what, uh, the story of the silver trolley, you got one to Ackworth? Well, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. in, it was downtown. And then uh-huh. actually our granddaddy owned it. He purchased if it. If you ask the anybody in town that's from here about the silver mm-hmm. trolley, they all know about the silver trial. Okay, yeah. So, so what did they use it for? Here? It was it was a restaurant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We served Hot dogs, uh, breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch. And my grandmother did all the cooking, who was an excellent, excellent cook. Uh-huh. She was a wonderful cook. And then for some reason, uh, my granddaddy sold it. And someone else kept the restaurant going and then it just, you know He was still at the railroad too though. Yeah, he was still at the railroad and it just uh-huh. You know, fizzled out yeah. after he sold it, and then they sold it, and they moved it out of town. I wish they hadn't because it was Doug really Doug G. had great. got it. Did he or purchase something it? something and did something with it. Now, where exactly was it located in Aqua? Um, well, if you're going, okay. You know where that... Um, you know where the bookstore is? Okay. Oh, that's what you're... Oh, yeah, yeah, right there that in that way. area. Okay. Yeah. It, it was right across, almost across from the Ice House. Where? Ice House was here, he yeah. and here was the silver trolley. Yeah. And the Ice House was directly below that little street that runs through the buildings. Okay. 
that's in town. Yeah, yeah. It's about right down right that corner. Right up there, that street that comes down, mm -hmm. that little narrow street yeah. okay. mm -hmm. by the dentist office. One, of the, one another thing that's that really uh, goes back to our childhood. We were all we. It was you didn't have any options about going to church on Sunday morning. It was you get up, you go to Sunday school, and you go to church. Ask which church you went to. A First Baptist. We were First Baptist. And actually, Mother told me that uh, for so many years they didn't have a nursery. Mm -hmm. And when they finally built a nursery onto the church, she said, you were the first baby in the nursery. <laughs> I don't know if that was, you know, she thought that was really a big deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, we spent a lot of hours at the church and Bible school mm -hmm. in the summer, Mm -hmm. You know, you just went. And even when I was a teenager, you know, and um, doing things I shouldn't have been doing, on Sunday morning, Mother would say, I don't care how tired and how sleepy you are, you get out of that bed, you're going to Sunday school and church. So mm -hmm. that's what we did. And um, we could pretty much do what we wanted to after church. We could play ball. We could ride our bikes. We could do whatever, mm -hmm. but not during church. Mm -hmm. That's where you were going to be. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. used, after we left the cafe, mm -hmm. um, we took a concession at Atlanta Yacht Club, Mother and Gwen and I. Mm -hmm. Daddy was at Lockheed for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then there used to be a juke joint on 293 down there. American Legion. Where the, where the park is now. Mm -hmm. it's been the church before you the get to Nance Road. Prophecy, yeah. First it was the corn crib, if you can imagine. Then it was called the Smokehouse, if you can imagine. And then when Dad ran it, it was the American Legion. Okay. So um, we, he was right down the road from... Then he got a job at Pine Tree Country Club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where he got killed. Yeah. He was a greenskeeper. Okay. And uh, he was promoted to assistant pro. Uh -huh. And um, they were building us a house out there and everything. And uh, he was checking the greens one night, and that GP was driving. No brakes, nothing. No lights, no brakes. He had a telephone pole over there by the maintenance building and mm -hmm. hit his head. Mm -hmm. And uh, But now, if that had happened today, he'd been fine. Yeah. You know, they just don't have the medical. Well, that was the early days of the country club. Yeah, yeah. It was... Uh, Cobb Recreation Center. Okay, so this After, was before the country. Yeah. That he was started. Well, with. no, it was well, no, it, it was pine. It had just turned into the country club. Sixty three. Yeah. Um, it had just turned into pine tree. Just turned into pine tree. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Daddy was killed in sixty two, wasn't he? Sixty three. Sixty three. Okay. But. Yeah. Probably that the age of the getting drafted into World War Two. Well, well, he was. I, I'll jump back to that too. He was such an awesome <coughs> baseball player. Mm -hmm. He was really the first baseball hero in this area. And it, the old timers like us, they still talk about it. Still. How he would hit that baseball and it would bounce over those mill houses mm -hmm. and they couldn't even find it. Cross, cross 293. Yeah. Um, he was also an uh, excellent golfer. Mm -hmm. The Crackers. Daddy, it was, Casey had a contract in his hand, uh -huh. and he was they were going to sign him up, but my grandfather didn't want him to go oh, do right. it. And then Pearl Harbor hit. Well, it, yeah, it was the, it was the Braves, which became the Braves later. The Crackers, it was the Atlanta Crackers, yeah, then. Crackers, sure. Yeah. yeah. I remember going to the game. I still got a ticket stub from Daddy taking me to a baseball game down there. But we would spend. De Leon. Yeah. We would spend hours at this baseball field up oh, here yeah. at the Coates and Clark. Uh -huh. And I can remember we'd play up under the bleachers because, Daddy, we were there every weekend uh -huh. for games. They'd play yeah. nearby uh -huh. uh, teams like uh, Emerson and um, what's that little town? Kingston. Kingston uh, baseball. And our, our twin uncle, great, our twin great uncles played for Kingston. Mm -hmm. And my granddaddy was an umpire for Ackworth, and Daddy was the catcher. And so when Kingston came to play ball, it was all oh, out, yes, buddy. They, it was. <laughs> be all the Casey's, you That's, know, be yeah. four Casey's playing out there on the field. That was a serious game, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, 
We had lots of fun growing up. We did. We lived in every neighborhood. At one Uh time or another. Yeah, we lived in every neighborhood in town. Uh And I remember going to the Acro Theater, and Beth was barely walking. Uh And Gwen and I, my older sister, Uh there was a sign up on the marquee one day said that you could... If you carried a baby in, they'd get in free. So Gwen and I picked Beth up and <laughs> carried her in. I was two or three. <laughs> and saved her dime or whatever it was to get in, yeah. you know. And then, of course, we'd go get extra goodies for that, you know. And Van Hudson was always getting after us. I'd run up in the balcony, which we weren't supposed to be up there, and he was always, get down there, get down here. <laughs> Why weren't you supposed to be in the balcony? It was for grown-ups, I guess, for to grown-ups. kiss or something, you know. <laughs> well, Van, he was the son of the owner. Yeah. Well, he knew that I was of age and I was supposed to pay that dime. Oh, and so he, he came down there. He and- went, yeah, he, he went ahead and let us do it. And he said, okay, I'm going to teach them a lesson. So what I had to do, he said, okay, it, you sit in Gwen's lap through the whole movie. I had to sit in my sister's lap through the movie, the cartoon, the Three Stooges, Everything, so we never tried that again. We, we had our dance recitals there. We took dancing lessons in the old uh, JD's Barbecue, it's now the community. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the old, uh, yeah. Right yes, the uh, mother went to school there. Oh, and the Eli Whitney school? Yes, that yeah. was where she mother sure attended did. school. Uh-huh. And uh, I'll never forget, Beth, we had a skit that uh, I was a bluebird. No, well, I was the bluebird. bluebird. You were a butterfly. I was a green butterfly. Yes. <laughs> and it was made out of that paper crate stuff, you know. So we walked home that night. We lived over off Cherokee in this big two-story house, and it started raining. <laughs> and when we got home, Beth was blue, completely blue all over, and I was green. That stuff started melting on us. And we like we got home, we were laughing so hard we couldn't even stand up. <laughs> <laughs> also, when we lived over there, of course, we walked to school. We always walked to school. Yeah. So this was across the railroad track. And I can remember, for some reason, one of the houses that's where the stop sign is now, uh-huh. we had heard that, that a witch... We, we made that up, probably, to scare everybody. Well, we, well, we scared all... It scared yeah. me. We that's thought, where Olin McRae's house is now. Right. We thought there was a witch that lived in that house. There was she a big probably hedge. made it up. Mm-hmm. There was a big hedge, and you never could see her, you know, or right. anybody. Right, but the witch we'd lived in that house. We'd get to the end of that, that uh, <laughs> hedge, and we'd throw our books over, you yeah, know, and just having so fun. We, we, we'd throw our books over because we felt like they were too heavy because we wanted to run. <laughs> so we'd throw the books over the bridge, and then we'd run real fast. Yeah. I was always making up stuff to scare her. <laughs> He wasn't there then. Oh, no, the animals he wasn't were, there. He then. didn't live there then. He lived right in town. Yeah. Okay. Right there where the dentist office is. He it had a, a house. house right there. And there was toilets and uh, refrigerators and everything, you know. They were <laughs> in the plumbing the business. And yeah. You mentioned Dr. Cobble. Uh, did you ever uh, have any dealings with the McCalls? Yeah, my, yes. I grew up with Sue and the, the rest of them and stayed at their house all the time. and. If Dr. Cobble wasn't in, we went to Dr. McCall. Mm-hmm. And Mary, she treated me a few times. And uh, we we loved them. We loved all the McCalls. I and, remember uh, one Sunday. But I was... Dr., let me tell you this, Dr., okay. Dr. Cobble came to our house. We were his first patients. Oh. And we all three, we'd get everything together, the mumps, the measles, the chicken pox. And he went home and told Vivian, he said, well, there was one I couldn't get out from under the bed. And, it was me. <laughs> and he used to tell people that he learned to give shots. He practiced on the Casey kids. <laughs> one time when we, when mother was always calling him, and uh, she said one time he came in and he sh- took his hat off and he threw it over the chair. He said, well, which one is it this time? <laughs> and mother said, it's Beth. And mother said he took one look at me before he even touched my brow. And his whole face changed, and he just immediately went to me. I was, had a really high fever. Mm. But he he was a great doctor. I was One, scared to death of him. I was, too. And I wasn't scared of anybody else in I the was, world. I was. I was so afraid of him. <laughs> and, and I don't know why, but we were afraid of yeah, him. Yeah, well, he just he uh, meant business. His demeanor know, he, and, he yeah. He meant business. And, he was going to take and care of And he had the you. needle. <laughs> One Sunday afternoon, I, I can remember when we lived in the house where Mother lives now, so this is in the late... 50s, I had on a little pair of thin flip-flops, and I stepped on a piece of glass, mm-hmm. 
And it went through that flip-flop, and with every beat of my heart, the blood was just shooting out. It was just a stream. So Mother got me in the car, and she called Mary McCall. Mm -hmm. And she said, can you meet us? And she said, I'll be right there. So she met us at her office, and and now it's common to have those little butterfly Band-Aids. But before they were ever heard of, she just got my foot, she cleaned it, and she got a Band-Aid and pulled that together, no stitches, no clamps, anything, mm-hmm. pulled that together and 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 fixed my foot. Mm-hmm. And it didn't bleed and it healed. And so you know, I'll never forget that. <clears throat> when I was telling you that my mother would always fix, and my dad fix boxes of food and stuff to carry around, mm-hmm. we would give people food and Mary McCall was always there with medicine for people. Mm-hmm. I mean, if anybody needed shots and they didn't have the money, the McCalls took care of her. She was mayor part of that. Yeah, she was she mayor was. for a while. She After, sure yeah, she sure was. Yeah, mother mother loved Mary McCall. She just thought she was the greatest. She's a character. Yeah. So, One of a kind. Part of our childhood. But you know, when we, we lived on Dallas Street when mother and daddy had the beach, and I can remember, we there was a gang there too. Yeah. The families were Big the Parkers, the Ragstalls. The trees. Two sets uh, of Altries, the Bryants, Bryant's the McClure's, and the every, Clarks. Clarks, who else? Well, and the Pridmores, everybody lived around there by the school. And we, mm-hmm. I mean, and every afternoon after school, weather permitting, we played baseball in the backyard of Jerry Bryant. His backyard couldn't have been... Half you know, of this room. Half of not this that, room. But. I don't know how we played <laughs> baseball back there, but... Tell them about when you, our brother, he's, he's an attorney now. I was babysitting Thank God he him. made was, it to be grown. I was babysitting him. He, <laughs> she was, was, about, babys- he was, was about this high. He wasn't even walking. And I had him in a playpen on a the pitcher's pen. mound. On the pitcher's mound. <laughs> so mother couldn't get us on the phone at home to call from the beach and check on us. So she called Miss Bryant, and Miss Bryant said, have you seen my kids? And she said, have you seen Bill and little Bill and Pat? And she said, yeah. Uh, little Bill's on the pitcher's mound, but he's ducking. <laughs> he was in his playpen. She had drug his playpen out. <laughs> uh, talk so. about the schools. Aquith Elementary, did you go to Autry? No, no there, uh, it, it, it no, well, didn't exist. Oh, Aquith Elementary. Yeah. And then Straight to the ninth yeah. grade. Actually, it wasn't even called Aquith Elementary at that time, I guess. It yeah, was, it actually it was. I had, let's see, I was in the first grade, and we had an old army barracks for our lunchroom. Okay. The tables were affixed to the wall, uh-huh. and the stools were affixed to the table with an um, iron bar that swiveled a little bit and had a round wooden stool on them, uh-huh. okay? And uh, Mother was mad at me for some reason. I think I went and hid the woods one day. I didn't want to go to school. And uh, she always packed. All I ever wanted was peanut butter and jelly. I wouldn't eat that food or I wouldn't drink the milk. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sat down at my lunch table one day with my friends, and a yellow jacket stung me on the tongue. Well, I jumped up on the table. I kicked everybody's lunches off. I was screaming and hollering. I jumped down. I was running out of the back of the... Uh, Miss Wynn caught me right here by the, by the collar, jerked me back in, and my tongue was swelling. Mm-hmm. And, and I couldn't talk. tell her. She thought I was having some kind of fit. So she called Mother, and Mother came up, and I finally pointed to Mother, you know, that my tongue was swelling because of the bee. And, we, of course, we go to Dr. Cobble, and every time we had to go to the doctor, we always got an ice cream or a coloring book and crayons. And, mm-hmm. and sucker so, or something. So uh, after my tongue went down, I looked over at Mother, and I thought she was mad at me. See, and I looked at her, and I said, Mama, why would you put that bee in my sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> like to broke her heart. She thought I thought she'd done it on purpose. <laughs> well, talk about the Ackworth Elementary. I can remember that you didn't want to get in trouble. If I got in trouble, and usually... I would get in trouble for talking in class. Well, when you got into trouble, what the teacher would do, you would have to go sit, stand out in the hall. Yeah. So when Mr. T.C. Cantrell came down the decided hall. to come out of his <laughs> office and look down the hall, you had had it. <laughs> so I can remember watching for him, and when he come out of his office, I would run over to the water fountain. <laughs> I'd pretend I was... 
but everybody could, was scared to death of him. I remember Charles. He was good, but we were scared of him. I you remember know. Charles Williamson. He put this on Facebook the other day. I said, Charles, I don't remember that part. He said, do you remember when we got in trouble in class? And I think it was Miss Clayton put us out in the hall. He said, you were crying. He said, you were crying. I said, that's because I was so afraid of TC. But he never paddled. I don't ever remember as a girl getting to paddling, but the boys did. Yeah. The boys always got paddled. Yeah, I, I, I played hooky one day and got in trouble. But you know what? I got back at that with TC. You know how? When they were tearing the school down, you know, they just let us, anybody go in and get what we wanted. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the bulldozers were there. And everything was coming down. Well, people were just all over the place like little ants. Getting locker doors. And yeah. and nobody thought of this, but I said... Beth got TC's door. I said, TC's door. <laughs> I got to have TC's door. So I, I called my husband. I said, run home and get whatever you need to do. So we took the door off the hinges, and it's in my house to this day. Yeah. And Billy Pittner, I know you probably had her on here, she teases oh, yeah. me from time to time. She'll say, well... Beth got TC store. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start calling him TC? Oh, we always did. No, I didn't. Not behind his, not not to his face. I didn't. Yeah, everybody I, called him TC. Yeah, to, yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was always Mr. Cantrell, but we were uh, we were deathly afraid of him. But he had to be that way, you know, to keep us in line. And I understand that now. Yeah. So, but he was really, he was not. Uh, to be feared. I guess you all were too early for Butch Price to be at the school. Too early. Yeah. Now, our sister, uh, younger sister, and our other siblings, they were there with Butch. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. got in a lot of trouble at school. Mm -hmm. A lot of trouble? Yeah. Okay. I was always doing something, jumping out the window. Okay. Uh, she was a problem child. Some, some greasers came by one day and started some trouble with us, and we got a uh, they started throwing stuff, then I started throwing stuff, and mm -hmm. then they broke the gym windows out, and mm -hmm. and uh, coming to find out, they had just gotten out of jail, and they were bad guys. Mm -hmm. The police, somebody called the police, and they got Said that girl in the, with the bleach spot in her hair started it. Yeah. But I didn't. No. Now, 45, you were probably just about the age to be in the first class at North Carolina High School. Weren't you? I was in the second. I yeah. think our older sister, was Gwen, Gwen, Gwen was in the no, first class. No, Margaret Kennedy is crowd oh, was okay. in the first So Gwen was the second. Second, yeah, second year. She went there the second year. So I guess I was the third. I don't remember, really. I don't, I don't either. Well, I think it opened in 59. Okay. I remember we were in shacks at Ackworth High School one time. Shacks? Yeah, they had little shacks out there. At Ackworth Elementary. Those wood burning stoves. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <sighs> The shacks were like uh, the modular buildings that they often have when they don't have rooms. Now no, they do trailers. A wood, this was a wooden shack. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now and they, the high school was the high school. And over uh, where the grammar school was, it was torn down. Mm -hmm. Not Okay? Yeah. That used to be a big old two-story wooden building. Mm -hmm. And you had a big old, that's when we had that lunchroom that was an army barrack. And I remember going up to that second story with my aunt when she was in school. You know, it was a big two-story wooden building. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but we always called the playground the flat. Mm -hmm. That was our, that was the flat. I bet that your husband John grew up in Ackworth? Well, actually, I was thinking a while ago, when we were at the Ackworth Beach, uh, he and I, we didn't meet until 68. We were both working at Lockheed. And oh, okay. he's originally from Murphy, North Carolina, which is where we live now. Uh -huh. Been there seven years. Mm -hmm. But we were talking and laughing one day. When he was a kid, he would spend the summers with his mother in Marietta because she worked at Lockheed. Okay. And they would come to the Ackworth Beach when mm -hmm. he was a kid. I was probably seven, eight, and he was nine, ten. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? He said, that was the biggest thing in Cobb County because there was no place else to go. People from Atlanta came and up there, And we said, too. we probably passed each other uh -huh. then and didn't even know it. But I can remember it was so crowded, mm -hmm. you couldn't walk on the beach. But anyway, we thought that was kind of funny yeah. that he came to the Ackworth Beach because it was the only place to go. Yeah. But And there's lots of stories met. we can't tell you. Right. <laughs> well, we met, when we met at Lockheed, we got married in 68. <coughs> And uh, we lived in Ackworth for a while, had both our children. And then 
the big layoff came in mm -hmm. 72, 71 or 72. And he got a job with Georgia Power, and we moved to South Georgia, and I worked for Georgia Power. Mm -hmm. And more or less raised our children there, and then came back to Ackworth in 89 with the power company. Mm -hmm. And we're here for 20 years, and so, but, you know, mm -hmm. now we're in the mountains, but yeah. uh, our children were actually born here, too. Okay. So, right. but. Well, y'all told some great stories this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm.